Hello, my name is Colin Doyle, and I am a senior consulting engineer at Juniper Networks. Welcome to the third video in my updated Appster and Evng Lab series. If you did not watch the last video, go watch it. Uh, I talk about the prerequisites for building your lab, the state of your topology, and the tools that you can use to save time building it so it looks like mine. I talk about the issues that I've run into, the issues you might run into, some caveats, some considerations, and even a couple problems that I had to resolve while building this exact lab for this series. Let's pick up where we left off the last video and review the state of our lab. You should have your two simulated data centers somewhat built. It's great if you have it looking like mine. Minimum, we need to have everything that is in the red squares and all the links up for this next video. All of your VJunos nodes need to be powered on. I'll say again that you can build with VEVO. I'm using all VJunos. I will include some VEVO workflows just in case this is how you want to deploy one or more nodes. But for the sake of what we're doing, it's all VJunos. These should all have the minimum configuration required for onboarding into Appstra. They should all be IP'd, whether through DHCP like I'm doing or statically. All of those addresses should be on the management interfaces, FXP0 in the case of VJunos and is it MGMT-RE0, I think is the syntax for VEVO. These need to be connected to a vSwitch of some sort. I'm using one of the cloud interfaces that Eve uh, sets up uh, by default when you build it out. And it connects into a subnet in my lab called LabNet10. And Appstra, the AOS server, needs to be able to communicate to those interfaces. And you need to be able to communicate to them as well because you need to be able to get to the management UI. Ooh, go away, you. Sorry, doing some prep earlier. You can ignore that. If you're here, if everything's ready, then you're ready. And let's begin. The bulk of today's video is going to deal with device profiles. Appster is multi-vendor, and it is, at its heart, a tool for abstracting the complexity of a data center fabric. I talk a lot about how the intent model is awesome in other videos. I won't get into that here. The reason that I want to talk about the multi-vendor is because device profiles are key. If you have a multi-vendor solution, there is a point where you have to logically represent a fabric that is discrete from the physical hardware underneath. Obviously, you have to match things like interface count, port speeds, and what have you. But for it to be truly multi-vendor, there still has to be some abstraction between the vendor hardware and the code running on that hardware and the logical re representation of what that hardware does in the fabric. What I mean by that is that logically, all that hardware does in a fabric is represent interfaces that run at certain speeds. And then within the fabric, those interfaces are going to be either doing nothing or they might be connecting uh, switches together for the fabric, like maybe leaves to spines. They might be connecting to hosts that are connected to the fabric. They might be connecting to external routers that are outside the fabric. Uh, lots of different things. All of the, that is logical, but underneath that logical construction is the physical hardware. The device profiles are that physical hardware. When combined with the interface maps that we're going to build in this video, that's where we start to see the connective tissue that connects that physical device to the logical constructs that Appstra uses. Appstra has a list of supported device profiles, right? This is when you go to the uh, juniper.net site, or if you Google for what hardware and code apps or supports, you'll get a list. This is what that list is in, in practical terms in Appstra. Included in that is the virtual platforms that we're going to be using. If I go here and I type in V just for virtual. You'll see that there are four predefined device profiles for virtual platforms in Appstra. We're all familiar with VQFX if you went through the last video series. I'm not going to get into the difference between VEX and Junos Switch. We are using, oh, that's not the right one. We're using these two. I could just deploy these as is. I'm not going to because I don't like that they deploy with a bajillion ports. Well, 96 to be 
specific here for the V Junos, and not quite as many for V Evo. However, V Evo deploys a front panel that mimics the PTX 10001 36MR, which includes a mix of interface speeds and breakout capability. And I just want to have something easier to work with. Again, not required, but it did give me an excuse to show you how this works. So the first thing I'm going to do is clone VJunos switch. So that instead of having 96 ports, I have 10. I'll give it a unique name, in this case, VJunos Lab. I'll click ports and I'll scroll all the way to the right. Oh, something to notice. See how this is zero index? That's how Juniper rolls. If we change this, and there's actually a little warning about it here, that is going to undo the zero indexing. So let me grab this and drag it over and you'll see it's reset to one. We'll click the one and then drag to the right. The intent here is, come on, there it goes to get this range under display ID. You could also just click one of these and then click each of them individually. You can just, the whole point, get them all selected, click the negative button, it zero indexes again, click the clone button. Great. We're done with our VJunos. If you are using VEVO, it's a, a bit more complicated. And the reason it's more complicated is because of the mix of interfaces it's much easier to, and let's get the name here, dash lab. It's much easier to simply delete this than try to redesign it. And I'll show you what this looks like here. All of these transformations represent the different types of modes that the different interfaces on the switch that's being simulated supports. And rebuilding these transformations, editing these, it's just a pain in the butt. So essentially we're gonna convert this VEVO switch into a switch that has 12 interfaces and they're all 100 gig and we're not doing any channelization. So we'll go ahead and delete that port map. We'll add this panel. We'll change this to 12. Come on. Uh, we'll highlight everything. We'll do the same thing we did in the last one to zero index. We do have to change the connector type because we deleted the panel. There's no information here already. We'll say QSFP 28 and we'll say new transformation. Obviously the QSFP 28 is going to run at 100 gig and we need to change the name template. The name template is how we represent the interface naming in Abstra. In Junos, a 100 gig interface, actually a range of interfaces, but in this case a 100 gig interface would be named et dash zero slash zero slash, and then what's this display ID? That's going to be the port ID. So essentially we're going to tell it to just use the port ID for this last value. And that'll give us the representation we need. Click add transformation, and then go back in and edit. This information here is how the configuration would actually be represented on the box. And I'm not going to <laughs> type it out. Here's what it looks like. I'll just copy that and paste it in. And I'll let you look at that and pause if you need to. These little dots here represent spaces. I did want to make sure that I had those dots there so you could tell where the spaces are. Uh, all right, moving on. And now I click the Save button and I click Clone and I have the handy dandy VEVO device profile that of course I'm not going to be using in my lab, but now you know how it works. Now we're going to onboard these devices. We'll go here to manage devices and we'll see there's nothing here. We're using virtual platforms, which means that we have to run our agents off box. Appster supports both on box and off box agents. Go to juniper.net to figure out what's supported on what platform. We're really just concerned about how to build our lab here. So we'll go ahead and click Create Off-Box Agents. I'm gonna do one fabric at a time. I could honestly do all of them at the same time, but I'm not. Uh, if you're wondering, here are your IP addresses. The range is a little bit interesting. Just make sure you follow the syntax here. It's not like you would be typing a range into a dot. It's, it's been a while, right? What is this, 11 through 16? Yeah, 11. It's not like you're typing a range into Junos, 10.0.10.16, but you'll know you've got it right because it populates this dynamically. 
just make sure you check that. I could do a comma here and I could do all of them. Ah, heck, why not? Uh, 10.0. Uh, actually, it's 11, or did I switch to 20 over there? Jeez. <laughs> All right, uh, 10.21 through 10.0.10.26. Great. We're doing full control. We're running Junos. We created an AOS admin account with a password of capital J, U-N-I-P-E-R, when we did our prep on our nodes. That's it, we just click create. And now we wait. You're going to see the job state here transition. If you wanna watch, the progress, you can click on this actions button and look at the eyeball that shows up once this actually starts to run, which should be any second now. <laughs> there it goes. And you see this eyeball is now here. And if you click that eyeball, it'll take a minute to fetch the data, but then it'll show you the progress. If you run into problems, this is really useful to show you where things broke. Uh, I've certainly come in here and had it cycle over and over where I have either mistyped a password on one of the devices or fat fingered the actual agent deployment that we just went through. You see the successful connection check, you're probably tracking in the right direction. I spent a lot of time here because the prerequisite configuration for virtual nodes wasn't defined, at least it wasn't anywhere I could find it. So I would do the onboarding, I would see where this complained about configuration that it wasn't expecting on the virtual switch. I would go in, I'd make a change, I'd come back here and I'd go back and forth until I got to a point where I wasn't getting any errors. Now, there is an option if you go under advanced settings to tell it to ignore those errors and just onboard the agent. The reason that I spent so much time figuring out what the prerequisite configuration was is because I did click this checkbox the first time I built this lab and I got pretty far along before things started oddly falling on their face. And I was able to determine that there was conflicting configuration that I had chosen to ignore that was causing problems. What you're looking for here is this to say success and this to say OSS quarantine. We have two more steps to take. We're going to go ahead and check this box and we're going to not that. No, if I do that, it'll give me an error. I need to acknowledge these first. Confirm. It says OSS ready. Terrific. Now check them all again. We need to tell the platform what the hardware is using the device profile. So we're going to click this button and set device profile. We can just type in vjunos. We'll see the dash lab we created. If you go to deploy your blueprint, and you go get to the step where you're assigning devices and nothing's there, likely you've forgotten this step. If this just says is vjuno switch, because Appster sees the box and it says, all right, well, this is the profile I need to, to log to load on. Uh, it's the default one I shipped with. Uh, all, the, all the steps we're gonna take after this one where we reference the device profile, this vjunos lab, mean that essentially when you get to the blueprint stage, if this hasn't changed here, that there are no devices with the device profile that matches all the config you've done to associate to the blueprint. Fortunately, the fix is easy. It's just coming back here and changing this, but I did have a couple panic moments where I built fabrics. I was ready to deploy that first, uh, that, that first tranche of configuration. And I was like, where are all my devices? Where'd they go? And I'd just forgotten to change the profile name. All right. So well, we're done, actually. I thought we were gonna get to interface maps in this one. I must have been wrong. Maybe I should read my own maps, my own, uh, my own notes here. Uh, I know I said we were gonna get to interface maps. I think I said that earlier. Uh, we are, but it's not in this video. The next video is the big one. Uh, it ends with us deploying the initial configuration of the fabric. So there's quite a bit of steps. It's going to probably be the longest video in the series. Except, I don't know, maybe one of the DCI videos might get a little bit longer because I go deep on uh, at least the one where we're doing uh, connections between uh, spines. So yeah, we're, uh, we're done. Great. <laughs> I thought this was going to be longer. Uh, hope to see you in the next video. Uh, if you have any uh, comments like, hey, this is right, put it in the comments on YouTube. If you have any questions or any you want to go deeper on any of these topics, uh, please, uh, there'll be a link in the description. Go over to the Elevate community. There'll be a thread that I'll link to that is specific for this video. It'll have the companion documentation that I've been using, that I created, and anything else that I think might be useful for you. 
Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining me and hope to see you in the next video. Take care.